Uh, packed here in our little showroom in Durham, North Carolina, we have a nice sampling of the iconic Speedster. First off, a big thank you to the Ingram Collection. Uh, Mr. Bob Ingram, also one of our local best friends, Mr. John Soley, for letting us borrow a few of their examples to go along with a couple of our inventory speedsters. Today we're taking the opportunity. Let's talk about the history of the speedster and the timeline going back to the very beginning all the way till the hottest thing in today's market, and we will start back with the latest and greatest 2020 Porsche 911 Speedster. Actually had the opportunity to drive this particular car this morning, to drive it like it was intended, right? Pushed it a little bit, had fun, and everything you would expect from the new generation of Porsche, all the innovation and technology, feels like the GT3, a GT3 Touring, with an open top. If you're fortunate enough to have an allocation or get your hands on one, there's certainly a, a keeper in my mind. Its predecessor, we moved to the 997 Speedster 2011 of the late model Speedster, certainly the most rare. Worldwide, 356 produced in only two colors, pure blue and Carrera white. Well, yes, there were a few paint to sample cars. We definitely, uh, know about a, a couple black ones, I've seen a few other paint to sample cars, a silver car, but as a whole, mostly just done in white and blue, only 356 997 Speedsters. No 996, no 993. And we get to the last air-cooled Speedster, 1994, the last year of the 964. Various colors, you see them in white, red, black, a few paint to sample cars. We get the known, kind of the cliche, snorkel on the rear deck lid, just like we do in the 89. One of my favorites in the Speedster lineage, essentially because I think it held very true to its original form and its function as a narrow body. And not having the wide, we see some 964s, we think of the turbos, the turbo S's, the flock bows, and they were wide body turbos and the Speedster kept to its lineage and its heritage, having the narrow fenders, narrow hips, and the, and the theme of less weight, just more drivability of a dual purpose sports car. Five years before that, we get to the G50 1989 Speedster. 30 years after the 356 Speedster, Porsche decides in an exclusive division, let's produce another Speedster. And this is what we got, producing a little over 2,000 cars. Um, an interesting fact that not everybody knows, most Speedsters came in the M491 package, which is the wide body. And actually, in 1989, there were a few narrow-bodied Speedsters. I personally have never seen one in person. But there were a little over 2,000, almost 1,900 of them were wide bodies. So not many narrow-bodied Speedsters in 89. And also, you couldn't tell from this video, but the Speedster badge, most 89 Speedsters did not come with the badging. 30 years prior to 1989, we get back to the 356s. And as all of these were spread out in production, right? It took 30 years from 1958. There were a few examples in 1959, the GS GT Speedster, a Carrera GT Speedster, but this in 1958 in a shade, a slightly a lighter version of Fjord Green, fantastically restored example of one of the last iterations of the Speedster in 356 with the 1600 pushrod engine. And before moving to the, to the grandfather of them all, just a thought, if you could have a Speedster, or maybe you have one, which one would you choose? More importantly, we're interested to know why, or heck, if possible, of course, we all understand we, we all live within budgets and we know of several collections that house all the iterations of speedsters and collectors 
sometimes we talk with them about themes like RS themes or perhaps acquiring all the Porsche 911 turbos. Why not have them all if you can? Uh, the Speedster is arguably, in my mind, the most iconic Porsche. Always will be coveted for many years to come. My favorite Speedster is the beginning. As I mentioned, the grandfather of them all, 1955, uh, really 54, the Prie Speedsters, where they, they did have push rods, but at that time, Ferry went to Carl Robb and said, hey, let's, let's put a few four cams in the Speedsters and see how well they're received uh, between the public and also the race teams at the time. So only 15 Carrera Prie Speedsters ever built. Let's take a look quickly at the 4-cam engine. As significant for Porsche history, the first iteration of the 4-cam engine, the Type 547-1, the same engine used in the 550 Spider. Really, my choice and my favorite Speedster Because when you get behind the wheel, you just get the essence of what Ferry intended. Dual purposed, open sports car, meant for the road, possibly the track. I was fortunate enough to drive this particular chassis on the California Miele briefly last year. Over a thousand miles, the car had no issues. The 4Cam produces 125 approximately horsepower. The power to weight ratio is incredible. The response, uh, just a fun car. Do let us know if you have any Speedster questions. Just thought we would take this brief opportunity uh, before a few of these examples leave the campus to talk everything Speedster and share a little bit of insightful information of the history of arguably one of Porsche's most iconic models. <laughs>